Aloha, everybody. Aloha. Um, not sure if you wanted me to pick the mic up there, Dove, but let me know if you would like it. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you. Lovely to be here again. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you for that beautiful, beautiful soothing music there. It's a lovely meditation or very soothing. Perfect, yes. <laughs> Looking at the board here. All is perfect. And yes, I'm um, feeling very joined with everyone. I'm just reading, looking at the chat room here and reading on the board and uh, people here from all over, from Algeria, from Africa. Um, yes, and, and Dove has put up on the board here. I'm, I'm from Australia, originally from Australia and, and now living in Hawaii. Aloha. <laughs> Hi, Sally Ann. Sally? Sally Ann or Sally? Hi. Thank you. <laughs> That's the um, um, Aussie accent still, I guess, coming through there. She's written lovely voice. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, yeah, I've been here um, actually, gosh, about 15 years over in the States, but still somehow hanging on to that old um, accent. <laughs> um, Hawaii Dia Dia Chan. I'm reading on the board here. Azert. I'm not sure what your name is. I haven't met you before, so aloha. Nice to meet you, Azert. Hello, and let's see. Oh, Sally. Sally? Am I, is it Sally or Sally Ann? Is it Sally? Sally's from the UK. What part of the UK are you from? It is Sally Ann. Hi, lovely to meet you. First time I'm meeting you too. Wor Wor Worcester. Did you say Worcester? Or <laughs> I'm not sure how to say that. Is that Cots Cotswolds? Okay. My um, my father was actually um, born in England in Bradford. So I have some English blood there. Came over to Australia when he was 13. My mother was born in Australia. So well, you say it wo Worcester. <laughs> oh, you say like <laughs> stuff put up on the board here. You say it like Worcester. Yeah. And and Lynn is from um, Colorado, and I saw there, I think Lisa's left the room there, but she's from, um, um, Lisa's from Las Vegas, I believe, too, so we're all coming from everywhere, and Sally was born in Yorkshire, uh, what, put, what part of Yorkshire were you born in, is that, that's probably, is that where, let's see, Wooster, <laughs> is that where Wooster is in Yorkshire? Maybe that's near Bradford then, because I know Bradford is in um, Yorkshire, where my dad came from. So um, we're all coming together here, and it's so lovely to for all of us to um, join here on, on Radio Gather. Such a beautiful feeling as I was listening to that lovely music that Lynn was playing and and reading the board here and smiling and just really feeling the coming together and the joining and what this what this is doing for all of us. The awakening and um, thank you, Dove. Thank you for ACIM Radio Gather. We we all really love it here. It's, every time I share here, I always feel so uplifted. Walking away after my hour of sharing and um, just really very in, in much gratitude. So thank you. I'm looking back at the board here, seeing who who else is in the room. Aloha, gentle listener. Aloha, Jim. Jim is the author of Heresy. We're enjoying reading your lovely book. I look forward to picking it up again each day. And I'm um, really enjoying that for those that haven't heard of that. It's Heresy. I believe the website is heresy.com. Let me know, Jim, if that's, if that's right, if that's correct. And there is someone else new here in the room, CNA student. Haven't met you before, so aloha. Lovely to meet you. And Shirley, hi Shirley, and of course Lisa, Lynn, and um, Sally, Neb see if I can say this name, Africana, I think, Nebiat, I think, um, Dove said Nebiat, and Azert, I didn't get Azert's name, if you wanted to put it up on the board there and would know your, is that your real name, Azert? Azert, but, um, so... Here we are together and so lovely to be sharing and today I would like to talk about forgiveness. 
forgiveness is it's something that of course you know we it's a core message of a course in miracles we forgive we forgive our brother we forgive ourselves and we go home you know that's the core message of a course in miracles it came up in our study group last night we were talking about steps in forgiveness and I, when I look back at my journey, I'd like to share a little bit about my forgiveness, my learning and understanding with forgiveness and the steps. Steps that came and steps that went. <laughs> uh, early on in my journey, I remember I was um, talking with uh, Lee Jampolsky, Jerry Jampolsky's son. Lee Jampolsky and um, we were hanging out and we were talking about the course and I was asking him about forgiveness and um, when I asked Lee about it and about steps in understanding what I would do to truly forgive, I was fairly new to the course at the time and I was really looking at steps that I could take and um, trying to have a, a better understanding of forgiveness and Lee said to me, it's, it's just choose love, just keep on choosing love, choose love. And it sounded beautiful and it sounded simple and and I loved it, but at the time it, it, it didn't resonate with me to choose love. I recall I, I, the, something in me was requiring steps. I needed some steps to assist me with getting to that place of truly choosing love. And so I um, sat with Holy Spirit and received, I think it was about four steps, four or five steps that would... Um, that, that resonated with me, that would help me with my forgiveness. And what I've come to realize today, those steps over the years, those steps went from four or five steps to, say, three steps, two steps. And now I, I, now I, today I realize where Lee Jampolsky was coming from and, and why he was saying choose love. It's just a matter of choosing love. And... Today, I look at forgiveness as being willing to see differently and then nothing else. We do nothing else. We're being willing to see differently. In other words, we are choosing love. It's the same. We are choosing love in that moment and we're willing to see differently because now we know that what we have been looking on isn't love. It is It is a obscuring love what we've been looking on for a lifetime all these seeming separate identities seemingly separate objects are obscuring love and so when we're asking when we're looking at forgiveness and we're looking to forgive we're asking we are asking for love but of course Along the way, we talked about this in our study group last night, and a couple of people were asking for some steps. And it can be very useful. I know on my journey it was very useful to find steps. And, and my answer to them was the feeling that came up with inside me was tell them to go to the Holy Spirit within, and the Holy Spirit will guide them to the steps. I recall sitting with forgiveness and the Holy Spirit offering me, like the, the steps coming to me. And with it in mind, just that the message I did receive from Lee those few years back was that keeping in mind that it is, that our goal is love. When we understand, when we know that our goal is love, then we can't go wrong. We will know, the steps will come, we will know, we listen to Holy Spirit and we receive the steps and it may be something like, you know, looking. This is back looking at my journey, realizing that these are. I'm re going over some steps that I received from Holy Spirit. Was first of all realizing that it was a dream, that it was that it, that I'm in a dream, and that um, I was making this up. Realizing that it was all my doing, calling on Holy Spirit for a correction. And waiting for the correction with Holy Spirit, and and the realization becoming from Holy Spirit that I was 
mistaken. There was nothing split. There was no separation. No split off. And there was oneness. And looking back at, at forgiveness at the beginning of my journey, that was... Initially, initially, what comes to mind now, looking back at my journey, was that the initial steps in forgiveness are really coming from that place of learning, learning to unlearn. So the steps are kind of like learning. They come with that, that's the learning. And then as the steps begin to fall away, over time the steps will fall away, we'll, we'll realize that, that they're not required anymore. We don't require all the steps. It'll become more instantaneous, the process, to a point where it becomes a one-step process. It becomes instant, an instant forgiveness. But they, it, it falls away over time, these steps fall away as we're inviting Holy Spirit more and more. And what I find looking back at my journey, the initial steps in forgiveness was in the learning process where I was still very much holding the hand of the ego, of the ego mind, still working with the old self, still contemplating and calculating and, and, and understanding what this whole process is with A Course in Miracles. And when I look back at my journey today, I see that that's the whole A Course in Miracles, reading the text, doing the workbook lessons, we begin by learning to unlearn. So the initial stages of my journey with A Course in Miracles was a lot of learning, a lot of learning. And then at some point, the, the relationship became stronger and stronger with Holy Spirit, where the unlearning kicked in so just to go back there and recap so the beginning stages were more of an intellectual stage of really contemplating understanding grasping and of course we know that that, that, that none of that is Holy Spirit so we start off from that place with the old with the old self that is the old self we bring along at the beginning of <laughs> this journey that does want to be there. Of course, we know that. <laughs> the old self will hang on for its dear life. <laughs> and then at some point, we begin to trust more and more in Holy Spirit. The more that we trust in Holy Spirit, the more we, the more we begin to realize that the old self is, is not what we thought it was. It, it's not required. We it's no it no longer becomes useful on our journey and we begin to release. We begin to release the old self and begin to lay it at the altar. We lay down our specialness. The specialness of the separate identity that we've known for a lifetime. We begin to lay that down at the altar. And the more that we we lay that down each time we, we turn to Holy Spirit and we gain a greater communication, a greater relationship with the Holy Spirit self, each time we do, we have the realizations that arise that the old self was a like a fraudulent self, like a self that was illusionary. It becomes easier to let that go. It becomes easier to lay that down. That's what I found on my journey. Initially, the resistance to letting go of who I thought I was, was was very great. And then as I became, as I found the best friend within, this Holy Spirit, the voice of God, the love of God, and I, and I, the more I realized that this knowledge that was, that was coming forth from Spirit was such truth was something that that was so much greater than the knowledge of the ego mind, the learning of the ego mind. As I began to realize that the knowledge of the Holy Spirit was so much greater and so much more 
loving and eternal, all encompassing. It was it was it it was something that I grew to have faith in. And as my faith grew in Holy Spirit, it became a lot easier to lay down the old self and let the old self um, begin to die, as Lisa Kam says, we die before we die. And I think I've heard Adi Shanti say that, we die before we die. So we allow the old self, we lay it down at the altar. And so we have life, we, we find a new life, with the Holy Spirit, our faith. We, we realize that our faith with the Holy Spirit becomes our new life. And we find this best friend, this new best friend. And then in time we come to realize that we are this other life. We are this, there is this being this self that has been hidden that we are now beginning to remember through our relationship with Holy Spirit. And it's the only way that we will remember our truth, that we will awaken. I've said before that Holy Spirit holds our awakening in the palm of his hand. That's symbolic. The Holy Spirit's hold, holding our awakening, and there's nowhere else that we will ever find our awakening. We can find pointers, many books, many teachers, where we're all giving pointers to the truth. But the Holy Spirit is the answer every single time. Any time that we're listening and joining, communicating with Holy Spirit, we're heading home. And we're realizing this is where our truth lies. This is our true self. That we're really not dying. <laughs> There's really no death. There's nothing to die. All that, 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 that the death of the ego, the old self, all that is, is a letting go. For a lifetime I heard that, that term, let go, let God, let go, let God. I'm sure many of us have heard that through our lifetime. Let go, let God. And truly, you can sum up the course with just those words. We let go of everything which is really nothing. <laughs> it's all illusionary. So we're letting go of all this seeming everything, which is nothing, to receive the true everything, to receive true all, our eternal self, to where we will remember our eternal self, is through handing over the little self, the self that we have believed ourselves to be. And the only way to have that realization of that that old self is not who we truly are is it that is in the palm of Holy Spirit's hand. All realizations are in the palm of Holy Spirit's hand. The voice for God. All knowledge of God is with Holy Spirit. All our answers are with Holy Spirit. All our answers are within. And when we turn within and, and listen and guide and, and are guided, by Holy Spirit, we, we realize that Holy Spirit is everywhere. The same Holy Spirit, the same spirit sense that we know within ourselves is the same in our brother. Holy Spirit is in every brother. Same voice, the same knowledge, the same knowing that's surfacing within us when we turn to guidance within is the same knowledge, the same guidance in every brother. Eternally everywhere, eternal, all, et all eternally, Holy Spirit, there's no place Holy Spirit isn't. There's no place God isn't, there's no place love isn't, all eternal. We have limitations in our mind from the ego, the ego mind knows limitations, has decided upon limitations. Holy Spirit knows no limitations. Holy Spirit knows no death, no ending. There is no ending. But the ego mind will say, yes, there is. We can prove it. There's death. There's the end of the world. There's the end of the earth. But then the ego mind will tell us so many 
will give us many different reasons why there's an ending to everything. And Holy Spirit, we turn to Holy Spirit and look through the eyes of love. And love reminds us that there is no ending, there is no death. And that what our brother just said to us that felt like an attack never occurred. Which is, in the theme of special relevance, what is forgiveness in the workbook? I'm just going to read the first paragraph from there. This is in the workbook in A Course in Miracles, headed, What is Forgiveness? Forgiveness recognizes what you thought your brother did to you has not occurred. It does not pardon sins and make them real. It sees there was no sin. And in this view are all your sins forgiven. What is sin except a false idea about God's Son? Forgiveness merely sees its falsity and therefore lets it go. What then is free to take its place is now the will of God. I just want to read the last two sentences again there. Forgiveness merely sees its falsity and therefore lets it go. What then is free to take its place is now the will of God. And when it when, when it tells us that here, forgiveness merely sees its falsity. The only way we will see the falsity of the ego is looking through the eyes of love. Through the eyes of love with Holy Spirit. We have a realization, a moment of enlightenment, that what we have been believing in was false and therefore we instantly it is instantly forgiven we realize that we were mistaken and and as we realize that we were mistaken instantaneously is the forgiveness and instantaneously we are one in that moment we have a holy instant in that moment of forgiveness, a miracle. We live, we're in the miracle with Holy Spirit, remembering our truth. And so, when we look at the steps in forgiveness, we can see... I'm just coming on my computer there, just checking it. Okay. When we look at the steps in forgiveness, we can see that it all the steps in forgiveness are taking us to truth, are all pointing toward truth. And we see that forgiveness forgiveness is dropping the tiny mad idea. Everything that we're forgiving is just a symbol of the tiny mad idea, which is the symbol of our separation, our idea, our idea of separation. Our idea of separation is a tiny mad idea because we could never be separate from our thoughts. We can never be separate from love. Right now, there is a part of us that is home in heaven, safe right now, knowing its safety completely safe, eternally safe, no death, no ending, not limited in any way. There is a part of us right now within that is our true self. And then there's this other part of us that is that is believing that it is separate from love, believing that it has left its source, believing that it is living in this world, in this illusionary world, believing that there is separated items and bodies and things outside of itself, believing in separation, believing that separation is possible from love, not realizing in that place, not realizing that all this separate, all this belief in separation is obscuring love. 
love is all love is here love is everywhere all the time there is this part of us that's at home in heaven right here right now and this part of us that's at home in heaven right here right now does not know separation it's a part of us that is safe in the arms of God and safe in the arms of love right here right now and does not join in this other part of our mind in the separation and so this part of our mind that is now that that is believing that is split off is is looking to as we say let go let God that's all that is required is to let go and let love be let ourselves be again and and in that right arises the understanding there is nothing to do there's nothing to do but there is a mistaken belief to let go of and that's it that's all and that's all forgiveness is forgiveness is letting go of a mistaken belief and the only way that we can do that is by looking at our mistaken belief looking at anything that surfaces for healing taking a look the lesson today what I love about our lesson for today my grievances hide the light of the world in me I love the um, extended practice period where we see ourselves we're asked Jesus asks us to see ourselves looking at from the outside looking at dark clouds looking at and in, in, in any way you want to see dark clouds it could be in a ball pattern whatever you want to see but we're on the outside looking at these dark clouds on the inside of these dark clouds where we where we can't see is the light the light of the world where God is Holy Spirit is and of course this is all symbolic this is just an idea to to take us to helping us to get to the light and so we're asked during the extended practice period to see ourselves outside this dark cloud and to recognize that what what is keeping us outside these dark clouds and away from the light the light is within the dark, it is in the center let's say a round circle in the center of the dark clouds there's the, there's the light and so the dark clouds we're on the outside of the dark clouds and these dark clouds are obscuring the light and what keeps us here on the outside of the dark clouds not being able to see the light not being able to see God recognize God know God or know love recognize love what what keeps us there is our grievances it tells us in our lesson today it's only it's our grievances And so when we let go, when we let go of our grievances, then we can move toward the light. And but to let go of our grievances, we're looking at the dark clouds. And the lesson today, what I love about it is that it asks us to allow ourselves to be taken through the dark clouds. And that something will take us, and that something is God, will pick us up and take us, and we'll feel the dark clouds touching our cheeks, touching us as we as we pass through the clouds. But and we and we begin by allowing ourselves to go through the dark clouds. But as we allow ourselves to go through, we allow ourselves to be taken, and we do get picked up, and we get taken through, and we find that love is moving us. Love moves us through the dark clouds. Even though we can't see love on the other side of the clouds, we know that love is here where the dark clouds are. And even though we can't see it, it's obscuring our vision. Our vision is obscured because of the dark clouds. But we need know that, that love can carry us through the dark clouds when we're willing to walk through them. But we must make that choice to begin to walk through them. And as we touch them and they brush our cheek and we are then lifted and carried by spirit we realize that these dark clouds are not anything to be afraid of there is 
nothing that can harm us there, that love will carry us through the dark clouds when we allow love to carry us. And that's what we get from the lesson today when we, in the extended practice period. We hear the voice calling, we know, in, in just reading through the lesson, Jesus is calling. And we're being called to take the leap of faith and walk into the dark cloud. And it's a great, what I love about it is that today's lesson is a great way to look at this is what's really happening every day of our lives. Every day of our lives there is grievances, it's pain and suffering. There is this tiny mad idea of separation that is that we are believing in. We are believing in the separation. We are believing in the pain and the suffering. We are believing in, in that we have a right to grieve and that we are being attacked and that we are victims, etc. So we, we are on the outside of the dark clouds as we go about our day every day. If we are not having a relationship with love, with Holy Spirit, with God, whatever we want to say, if we're not having that relationship with love and we're going about our day and believing in the separation and, and seeing everything is outside of us as, as, as truly being separate from ourselves and not looking beyond that, then we are walking around dark clouds all through our day. And the good news is that we can take a look at all at any pain and suffering at our grievances we can look at the dark clouds we can walk into the dark clouds and as we choose to look as we choose to look at the darkness we will be lifted and carried holy spirit will carry us and what we learn is that there are no dark clouds we learn that it was all in our minds it was all a dream it's all a crazy thought that we were having that there was these dark clouds and there wasn't any dark clouds. We learn that if we're, as we're carried beyond, beyond the clouds toward the light. We know even before we reach the light in the lesson, today's lesson, before we reach the light, when, as we've been carried through the dark clouds, we recognize the realization can come forth that we know that even while we're Going through the dark clouds, love will carry us. Love is carrying us all the time. Will we allow love to carry us? And so, as we go about our day, it doesn't matter if we're recognizing that we're holding grievances, if we're recognizing there's pain and suffering, all we need to do is call on Holy Spirit. And we will be shown the truth. The truth will be revealed. Holy Spirit will reveal the truth. Holy Spirit will carry us beyond the dark clouds, beyond the darkness. And as soon as we're lifted and carried, as soon as we're in the arms of love, we know instantaneously that there are no dark clouds, that there are no grievances, there is no pain and suffering, that it was all made up. I've been making it up in my mind. It's a tiny mad idea that I could be separate from love, that I could be separate from my source. It's only a tiny mad idea. I just look at the board here, and Lisa's put up on the board, walk through it to see it was an illusion. Yes, we walk through it. If Until we walk through it, until we make that choice, we will not know in our hearts that it's a tiny mad idea. We'll just see it on paper. <laughs> in the big blue book here, we see, we intellectually know it's a tiny mad idea. Yes, we intellectually know that it's that the separation, that we're believing in separation. But And then like what Lisa's put on the board here, walk through it to see it was an illusion. We must take that step, that first step into the dark clouds. We must be willing to take a look. We must be willing to take a look at what grievances are, 
we must be willing to take a look at what this pain and suffering is. When we stop in our tracks, when we just stop and we, call, we turn to Holy Spirit and we take any grievance, any pain and suffering, whatever is causing us any type of grief, we take it to Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit will instantly reveal to us the truth, reveal what the truth is that it is only a tiny mad idea. And then we know in our hearts, we don't just see the words on paper that it's a tiny mad idea. We know in our hearts, we know in our hearts that we have been believing in this tiny mad idea and everything stems from this tiny mad idea. All these seemingly different things, separate bodies, separate items, separate objects, everything that will be separate Ideas are coming, all stemming from the tiny mad idea, that initial tiny mad idea of separation. And none of them exist. It's all an illusion. None of them exist. And we know that in our hearts when we turn to Holy Spirit and we take everything to Holy Spirit and we lay it on the altar. We don't have to do anything. I recall early on in my journey, the ego mind, my ego mind wanting to play a good part in fixing this problem of separation. <laughs> and then we learn along the way that, that the old self, the little self, will have no, has no place <laughs> in this journey, in the beginning of the journey. As we're in learning the course, we bring out little little friends, <laughs> little F friends. <laughs> we bring um, we bring this friend on for a little while as we're learning to unlearn the intellectual beginning phases of the course of miracles. And as we continue to turn to the Holy Spirit, our best friend, our capital F friend <laughs> within. Our best friend, when we turn to Holy Spirit, the more we turn to Holy Spirit, the least faith we have in the old friends, the old self. We begin, it begins to crumble. We begin to lose our trust in our little self. Our loyalty shifts. We begin to recognize that our loyalty has been with this little friend, this old self, our loyalty has been there and we've turned to this old self for our safety. The old self believes that safety lies in separation. If we sit with that, if we just sit with it for a couple of minutes, it's very clear, it becomes very clear that the old self feels safe in separation, feels safe hiding away in a body, separate being able to get away from anything or anyone at any time. The old self finds safety in separation. And as we turn to Holy Spirit more and more in our loyalty, we, t we take our loyalty to Holy Spirit, we become more loyal to Holy Spirit. We can't be loyal to both. We can't be loyal to the old self, to the little friend, and to the best friend. We can't be loyal to both. We're loyal to one or the other. So we begin, as our loyalty goes more to Holy Spirit, we drop the loyalty in the old self. And we realize that the old self has been running around with a blindfold on, thinking, believing that it had all the answers, that it had everything figured out. <laughs> That was one of my first sentences when I picked up the course and I really became a course student, became serious about the course, was I thought I had it figured out. <laughs> I had been studying Law of Attraction for 10 years, <clears throat> Law of Attraction and manifesting deliberate creation, and I believed I had it all figured out, had gotten good at visualizing, manifesting. And along came a course of miracles and one of my first nudges from Holy Spirit was 
and then we're visualizing. It's funny because <laughs> we're actually we're, we're moving here. The house where we're currently living has been sold, and we've been looking for another place and um, to rent. And a place came available not too far from here, but on the water. And I've had conversations with a friend here before about visualizing and how I, I used to visualize every morning for 20 minutes, 30 minutes every morning for many, many years. And then along came the course and I was nudged to hand over the steering wheel and no more visualizing and no more deciding how I wanted this, you know, life or this dream to be. So I was really only visualizing in the dream. And I was telling my friend about this property that um, we'd been looking at. And I said, yes, it's, it, it, it's lovely, it, it, you know, but of course I'm handing over the steering wheel. I'm, I'm not sure what's meant to be here. I, I'm not going to get in the way and let Holy Spirit decide here. I'm going to hand over the steering wheel. And she smiled and said, I bet you wanted to visualize it. <laughs> and and uh, Elise has put up on the board here, ACM was your best manifestation. <laughs> And Sally's written, yes, me too. You can't tinker with illusions. Everything is perfect already. That's so true. Yes, yes, yes. Everything is perfect already. And and trusting in that, trusting in that. So, um, yeah, it's, it, 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 it's truly, truly letting go of that steering wheel. That's been, along my journey, that's definitely... Is something and at the beginning picking up a course of miracles. I remember the I remember the first time I was asked to hand over this journal, and and that's exactly the message I got was that I had with the, with visualizing every morning that I had my hands firmly on the steering wheel, and I was only really moving the dream around, moving everything around within the dream to make the dream better, which of course is is fine. Nothing wrong with that. It, it, no, that that was all part of the journey. And but it, but now I was looking for love and true for the truth, and so I recall getting that message and um, handing over the steering wheel, taking it back, <laughs> and handing it over and taking it back, <laughs> and the steering wheel went back and forth many many times, and today still does here and there once in a while I'll, I'll, I'll realize I've got hold of the steering wheel and pass it back to Holy Spirit. But over the years, uh, definitely much, it is more, um, I'm more detached <laughs> from holding onto the steering wheel. But that was something that um, was very useful, very helpful for me to see that I was steering the ship, that I was deciding, that I was, was looking for a happier dream, which was fine for a while, while it lasted, it was it, it, better than being completely blindfolded and not understanding, law of attraction, or not understanding, manifesting, so it was a um, um, very useful time, and so when I, um, it, it was very helpful to look, to sit with the fact that I was either holding on to the steering wheel <clears throat> and when I was holding on to the steering wheel I was only playing around within the dream and 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 adding to the separation every time I had my hands on the steering wheel and I came to realize that when I let go of the steering wheel when I let go of the steering wheel I was allowing love to completely take over and when I would allow love, love would love knows all, all God knowledge. Love knows all that is unfolding, a perfect path that is that is unfolding here. Love knows all that is unfolding, and we can trust that love knows what is best for us in every single step of our journey. That love does know. And if when we take, when we hold, what I've learned on my journey is that when I hold on to the steering wheel, I might as well have blindfolds on. And, and in, with blindfolds on, I will crash and burn. 
at some point. While I'm holding onto the steering wheel, I will crash and burn, and I'm only adding to the separation. And I'm only...